Hello there, person on the internet, and welcome to my channel. My name is Matthew van der Putte. I'm a Belgian. I live in Sydney, Australia. I'm a time-lapse photographer, and this channel is all about time-lapse, travel, and teaching. Today, I'm going to teach you how to do this, which is a day-to-night, or what people call a holy grail time-lapse. It's called a holy grail time-lapse because it's difficult to accomplish, but I will prove you that it's not. Now, this is one of four methods that you can uh, use to shoot these time-lapses. Please hit the subscribe button, blah, 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 you know what it is, uh, so you don't miss any of the future tutorials or content on this channel. Now, Holy Grail or Day to Night, the name says it for itself, Day to Night, the light, the exposure is going to change. How do you deal with that? Because the imagery will get dark and it'll be underexposed massively. How do you make it uh, a smooth transition from day to night in this time lapse? I'm going to show you how with uh, cheap gear and cheap software. So, um, yeah, I mean, cheap's good, right? We're going to be using uh, Lightroom to organize and color grade the photos and we're going to use Photoshop to uh, compile and render the video files from the photo sequences and we're going to be shooting these photos on, in my case, on a uh, 5D3 but you can literally shoot this on any other camera as long as you can trigger them sequentially. You can even do it on your phone. We're going to be, um, I call this the crossfade method, so we're going to create multiple um, static, fully manually exposed uh, sequences of photos and we're going to, instead of playing them back to back, we're going to overlay them on each other and crossfade into the next shot. Now this has a few issues, uh, but we'll talk about that later. Anyways, let's get started, the shoot itself. Here's some silly phone footage of me walking across the bridge. If you want to know how I shot this, check out the previous video where I play around with my new gimbal. We ended up at this spot, Milson's Point in Sydney, Australia, which as you can see is a prime spot for a cityscape view. As I mentioned, you need a camera, also a tripod, and ideally something to trigger your camera, either a hardware or a software intervalometer. Make sure that your camera is rock solid and sturdy and that it won't move during the shoot, which will last probably between one and two hours. Flick all of your settings on full manual and make sure that your exposure is slightly overexposed, overexposed, overexposed for the first sequence. To keep things as simple as possible, we are not going to adjust any of the settings while shooting. That is reserved for another technique and for another video. Once you go below one or two stops underexposed, stop the remote from triggering and create a new folder in your camera. Straight away without losing too much time, adjust your search, wow, this is going great. Adjust your shutter speed to one stop overexposed, start your remote and sit back until it goes underexposed again. Don't forget to absolutely not bump into your tripod, take in the views and maybe post on your Instagram story making sure that people see that you actually get out of the house. Once the light has stopped changing and it is completely dark, leave the camera running for another 5-10 to 10 minutes until you pull the plug. Back to my office and time for post-production. Dump all the footage onto a hard drive and import the folder where you dumped them to into Lightroom using the add method. This will keep the photos in place. And now you're going to use Lightroom's interface to organize and name the sequences. I'm going to be using just the JPEGs today as we're doing a simple version. The raw is the same workflow, you just got to save the edit as metadata files and then Photoshop will read them afterwards. As you can see here, I'm making JPEG sequences in separate JPEG folders. These five JPEG sequence folders we're going to import into Photoshop to create the video files. Open up Photoshop and navigate to the first JPEG sequence and select the first JPEG photo. These rows are here purely for the future whenever I feel like editing them. Select the first JPEG, click on option and make sure to select it as an image sequence. This will read all the photos as video frames. Set your video frame rate, in my case 25 frames per second. In America you'd be looking at something around 30. And then you can pretty much straight away hit export as video file. Use the following settings to render the video. Now, I forgot to do it here, but you can adjust the scale by transforming the layer and filling the canvas. This way you will have no black borders on the sides of your shot. Render out the video and repeat this process. You will end up with five video files that look like this. Now, the idea is that we're going to layer these on top of each other. Now, in theory, we could have skipped the video rendering step and work with the JPEG sequences within Photoshop to overlay them on top of each other. Overlay, is that a word? What we're doing now here though is creating video files that are easier to work with. So it's easier to fine tune the crossfade for these video files than it is for the JPEG sequences because you need a pretty beefy computer to do that without it freezing up your whole system. Anyways, now that you've got all your video files, we're gonna jump into Photoshop and you're gonna go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stacks. You're gonna browse to the five video files that you made, open them up 
and then like magic, Photoshop is going to layer them on top of each other into a single project document. Let that run until it's done, and then you are going to manipulate the opacity of every layer. Start off with the first one, open up the little, uh, I guess you can call it effects tab on the left, click the stopwatch on the opacity, this enables keyframing, you've got one keyframe, the yellow little diamond, go forward a few seconds and click the diamond again to create a second keyframe, then go on the right to the layer tab and slide the opacity down to zero. This, as you may or may not be able to see, will reveal the layer that's underneath, then drag that layer in place, making sure that it starts right around the left keyframe of the layer above that one. And repeat the process, add keyframes, slide opacity, to zero on the second keyframe and keep going until you've done all layers. This will crossfade the footage through the five different layers into the one video file. Now this may take a bit of fiddling to get it perfect because sometimes you can get exposure jumps depending on how fast the light was changing in your videos. Once it's all aligned properly, go to File, Export, Render Video and double check all the settings. Make sure that your frame rate is set correctly. I had it on 30 for some reason. I changed it to 25 and then the export worked. You render it out, wait for the render to finish and have a look at the final result. And here we have it, a pretty simple day to night shot. However, I mentioned an issue before and you may have spotted it just then. Because you're overlapping video layers, you're also overlapping time. So if you look at that ship, we're actually fading from one video shot into another one. So some artifacts may appear or disappear depending on where they're coming from. That ship disappeared because I was fading out of that video layer where the ship was passing through. This means that this type of shooting is better when there's not too many moving subjects in the frame. Now, as a little bonus, I wanna quickly show you how to crossfade these videos in Premiere as opposed to Photoshop and show you how much faster and more efficient that is. So you're gonna open up a project, import your videos, create a sequence from one of them, remove the audio layers, layer the video files on top of each other, and then make sure that you can see the opacity effect in the timeline, keyframe where necessary. This might take some fiddling, but it's way more easier and it's way more clear if it'll work out or not because Photoshop isn't optimized for video and Premiere obviously is a video editing software. Repeat this process until you get it just right and then export the video. Et voilà, there you have it, a pretty decent day to night holy grail time lapse. Don't leave just yet, there's bonus content right behind this little self plug. If you want to know what gear I use, go check out kit.com slash mattjoes. It's a website that I started using recently. Literally everything I use is listed on there. And if you buy something after clicking through one of those links, I might get a little kickback or something. It's affiliate program. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. What else am I trying to say here? Oh yeah, if you want to uh, support this channel or these tutorials, go check out patreon.com slash mattjoes. We've got about 40 patrons on there and I'm pretty happy with them and I hope they're pretty happy with me. Patreon is an awesome platform where uh, people can support their favorite creators. So if you're into that, go check it out. There's also wallpapers, a time-lapse cheat sheet and tons of more content that you get in return for a monthly contribution. Wow, that was a decent plug, hey. Uh, like, comment and subscribe. Sorry, I should do it like that. Please like and comment. Um, um, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. That was fucking terrible. Bonus content time! Select the first and the last photo of your image sequences. Edit them as you please. Select them both, right click edit in Photoshop, copy and paste one photo over the other one. Create a mask on the top layer, select the gradient tool and shift click drag over the photo to create this little gradient from day to night. This is a great way to show the passage of time or to show a time lapse in a single still image. Thanks for watching. We're not done yet. I forgot to explain why this is the cheap and easy method. It's cheap because Adobe has their photo package as a Creative Cloud subscription, which um, you can find via the link in the description down below, by the way. It's about 15 or 16 Australian bucks a month, and it gives you access to Lightroom and Photoshop as a little bundle, and it comes with free upgrades because that's how Creative Cloud works. Uh, these are the only two pieces of software that you need to create these things, and in future tutorials, we'll cover the other methods of shooting these holy grail time lapses, but for now, you should be pretty sweet with just those two pieces of software. Now, the pros and cons of this method of shooting, the pro is, as I mentioned, it's cheap. It's easy because you don't have to do any complex um, exposure adjustments while shooting. And maybe the biggest benefit, this method works for any camera. As I mentioned, you can shoot it on your phone if you can trigger your phone sequentially to shoot photos. Um, now, the cons, let me just read off my cheat sheet here, right? The cons, obviously, as we talked about these time artifacts which can result in ghosting because you're overlapping 
time. It's not a sequ sequence from beginning to end that is consistent time-wise, you're actually overlapping time, and that results in some of these artifacts. What else did I have? Yeah, depending on the uh, speed of changing light, the speed of the changing of the light, you can have exposure pumping because you're going from bright to dark to a new bright scene, and it just takes a bit of fiddling sometimes, but that's probably... Yeah, that's probably um, the only negative sides of, of this way of shooting. Anyways, I should wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.